Uh, and Merry Christmas. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is my personal Savior. Uh, I'm happy to be here this morning uh, to talk about the love of Jesus. My name is Liz Kagwanja, and this is Liz Refuge TV, where we always say, don't go down alone. And of course, this time, we are remembering our Lord, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a period of Christmas where we remember the love that caused Jesus to come all the way from, from heaven to come so that he can be born here and then die for us. So today's topic is loving freely, loving freely. And we want to ask ourselves, is it possible to love freely? Is it possible to love freely? This means to love without any string attached. My viewer, we are living in a period where everything is all about money. Even love is being sold these days. I've been speaking to young people and the humanity in general, and they have been saying that without money, it's not possible for one to be loved, you know, with the true love. So it's like even love is being sold among other things of the world. But I want to say this, I want to talk about loving freely without expecting to be paid by those that you love, all right? By those that you give too much of your life, by those whom you sacrifice so much for, by those that you give so much money, by those that you sacrifice your dignity for, and even by those whom you defend with your life. Is it possible for you to love freely, or is it possible for them to love you, them that you love, them that you sacrifice for? Is it possible for them to love you freely? without expecting anything. Uh, I want us to be read by the word of God, as usual, from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. Uh, chapter 9, verse 19 to 23. 19 to 23. And this is St. Paul speaking. We all know Paul, and we know the kind of life that he lived for Christ. And he says this, and this has a real advantage. I'm not bound to obey anyone just because he pays my salary. Yet I have freely and happily become a servant of any and all, so that I can win them to Christ. Verse 20 says this, When I am with the Jews, Jewish, uh, I am with the Jewish, seem as one of them, so that they will listen to the gospel and can win them to Christ. When I am with the Gentiles who follow Jewish customs and ceremonies, I don't argue 
even though I don't agree, because I want to help them. Verse 21 says, when with uh, the heathen, I agree with them as much as I can, except, of course, that I must do what is right as a Christian. And so by agreeing, I can win their confidence and help them too. Verse 22 says that when I am with those whose conscience bother them easily, I don't act as though I know it, I know it all. And I don't say they are fools. I do not say they are fools. The result is that they are willing to listen to me help them. And they are also willing to let me help them. Whatever a person is like, I try to find a common ground with them so that he will let me tell him about Christ and let Christ save him. Verse 23 says, I do this to get the gospel to them and also for the blessing I myself receive when I see them come to Christ. My viewer, if you read the whole of that chapter, you will be able to see that there are two things that come up. One issue is that a worker must be compensated for the work he does. Everyone who does something, even those who work in church, even those who preach the gospel, yes, they are supposed to be compensated for the work they do. If you work in the church, you feed the sheep in the church, then you are supposed to also benefit from the work that you do. Whatever work you do in this world, you are supposed to benefit from that work. The other issue that is coming up is that it's not a must that everything you do, every good you do in this world, has to be compensated. It is not a must that everything you do, you have to be paid for that good that you do. Yeah, because St. Paul is saying this, that he had the right to be paid like any other worker who worked for the kingdom and was compensated and was paid for the work that he did. But Paul says, that as for him, he never expected anything from the Corinthians. He's writing to the Corinthians, and he's even asking them, have I ever asked anything from any of you? Have I ever asked to be paid? No. So him, he decides to do it differently. He said, even if you paid the others, for me, I've never asked to be paid. And he says this, when I am with the Jewish people, I behave like them. I try to be like them. When I am with the Gentiles, I try also to agree with them. I do not argue with them. Even if I do not agree with them, I do not argue with them. Why? Because I want to win these people. I want to win the Jewish for, for Christ. I want to win the Gentiles for Christ. And he even says that when he is with heathen, he does not also argue with the heathen. He tries to agree with them. Why? So that they can have confidence with him and so that he can have an opportunity to tell them about Christ. So remember, we know Paul's saying that whatever happens to him, it's all about Christ. Whether he lives or he dies, it's all about Christ. All right? So whatever he does, he does it for the love of God. 
He does it for the love of God, to win people for, to the kingdom of God. All right? He even says that when he uh, is also with the people who are weak mentally, he does not go calling them foolish. He says he does not go calling them foolish. He does not even uh, show them that he knows they are weak. He knows they are not intellectuals. Remember, Paul was an intellectual, all right? So when he is with people who are not intellectuals, he does not come telling them that they are foolish. Why? He stays like them. In other words, he says this, that whichever group of people he is with, he tries to find a central ground on which they can exist, on which they can interact, so that he can win all these groups for Christ. My viewer, I want to say this, that not everything that you do, that you have to be paid. All right? Ni ile akusema, tenda wema, wende zako. He says this in the last verse there, that I do this to get the gospel to them and also for the blessings I myself receive when I see them come to Christ. All right? So we are saying this, that Paul sacrificed his life to serve people without pay. He wanted his personal sacrifice to be a testimony of his relationship with the Lord. All right? Even though <clears throat> he has the right to be paid, he had the right to be paid like any other person. But he says this, that it's not everything that you do that you should be paid for. And for him, he chose to sacrifice himself, to love freely. And I'm asking you this question, my viewer. Is it possible these days to love freely? Is it possible? Paul desired to help the Corinthians <clears throat> and be as a model of faith and love without any monetary gains. As Christians, as Christians, we should be motivated by the love of God to do what we do. My viewer, our motivation should not be monetary gains. We should be motivated by the love of God. Yes, and the love of the gospel, to have the gospel reach as many people as possible. Because as we have read, there is a, a blessing that comes by seeing people come to Christ. I want to challenge you, my viewer, as a Christian, how many people have you changed this year? We are coming to the end of this year. How many people have you changed with your life, with what you do, with what you say, with your actions? How many lives have you touched? And that that particular person feels, as we speak today, that they are willing to change for better. They are willing to to leave their evil doings for better. They are going to be better people because of what they have seen you say, because of how you say, because of what they have seen you do. Yeah? How many people have you touched with your lives? We should not be motivated by mere compensation or monetary gains, my viewer. We should serve God without expecting money. I know, I know it is difficult. I know it is difficult. And I know even those who work in church, preachers and so on and everets, they expect to be paid because that is where they work, which is okay. But not everything you do that you have to be motivated by monetary gain. All right? Paul says when he is with different types of groups, the Jewish, the Gentiles, the heathens, the weak mentally, he 
tries to be like them for their sake. He even becomes weak for the sake of the weak. <clears throat> All right? So, we are saying that he is only careful to do what is right as a Christian. We are not saying that you go and sin. That if you stay with the sinners, you have to go and sin so that you can win them for Christ. That is not what we are saying, my viewer. We are not saying that you live walking in the right and walk in darkness. You walk as an evil man or a woman because so that you can win people for Christ. That is not what we are saying. But we are saying this. For example, let me give an example. Maybe you have one, two, three degrees. And you are working with the people who do not have those degrees. You do not have to go boasting that every time you are boasting about your intellectuality, your degrees, your achievements. If you are rich, every time you go to preach or every time you go to the people, maybe the poor or, and so on, you don't have to go and talk about your riches, your money, your what. Forget about all that. Forget about your status. Maybe you have a big status in the society. Forget about that status. If you want to win people for Christ, you have to humble yourself. That is what I'm saying, my viewer. That you have to be humble. If you want to win people for Christ, you have to be humble. You have to be able to fit. If you go to the youth, you have to fit. If you have to go to the old, you have to fit there. If you go to the rich, you go there. You know, even and there is a song that says, let the poor say they are rich because of what the Lord has done for them. Talk about the goodness of the Lord. Go carrying the goodness of the Lord with you. With you. Do not be proud. The Bible says that God hates the proud. God hates the proud. And he uplifts those that are humble. And the Bible says also that you humble yourself before the Lord so that the Lord can be able to uplift you in due course. So we are saying this, that whatever a person, uh, uh, whatever a person is like, Paul tries to find a common ground with him so that he can be given a chance to tell him about Christ so that the person can agree Christ to save him. Yes, it's all, it should be all about Jesus. It should be all about God. Yeah, Paul has described how he limits his own rights and freedoms in order to win others to Christ. He does all so that for the sake, he does all for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right? It is all about serving God by touching the lives of people, by sacrificing, by sacrificing greater values, yeah, for the sake of the mission that God has put in you. All right, my viewer? So we are saying that Paul places greater value not in his own selfish achievements, but in the mission that God has put in him of winning souls. All right? So he says that those sacrifices, they are costly. The sacrifices are costly, but it is worth. It is worth the sacrifices for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are saying that Paul says that he has made himself a slave to everyone. He has made himself a slave to everyone. That is why wherever he goes, he sacrifices himself. 
He sacrifices his dignity. He sacrifices his time. He sacrifices his life for the sake of the gospel. He says he becomes all things to all people to win them for Christ. He becomes all things to all people. He even becomes weak for the sake of the weak. He does all this for the sake of the gospel. And of course, encouraging others, other Christians, to do the same. And encouraging other Christians to do the same. His point is for believers to pursue godliness and good of others with that kind of commitment that is to love freely my viewer paul in his teachings encourages people to love freely and to have that total <clears throat> commitment to the kingdom my viewer it goes without saying that the days we are the days we are living in people have been divided by money yeah people are divided by money the halves and don't halves all right and then people are also divided by status the status people have social stratification yeah where now people feel I belong to this class, so I cannot mix with this kind of people. I belong to the rich. I belong to the, to the what? I don't know high and mighty in the society, so there are people that I cannot mix with. Social stratification. People are also divided by religion. Where you find people saying, we are Christians, we are what? We are Hindus. People are divided all over the world by religions. And also people are also divided by ethnicity, that I belong to this tribe, and so I cannot mix or I cannot help people from this other tribe, ethnicity. People are also divided by race. Of course, we have the, the blacks, and we also we have the, the whites, and you find there is, in the parts of the world, we find racism where people feel we belong to this race and so we are better than the other race. People are also divided by education, where people feel there are those that are learned and there are those that are not learned. My viewer, God is calling us to love freely. God is calling us. To love freely. We are supposed to let go all these things that I've mentioned here, the things that divide humanity. Because in the eyes of God, we are all equal. There is no Jew, there is no Gentile, there is no black or white in the eyes of God, there is no rich or poor in the eyes of God, in the eyes of God. We are all equal. We are all equal. And so we are supposed to let go. All those things that divide us. As we come to the end of this year, I want to challenge you. Yeah? Whoever you are, whatever you have, whatever you possess, whatever class, you know, whatever color, oh my God, whatever status, I'm challenging you to go out there and mix with the people this Christmas period. Let go your status. Let go your education. Let go your money, your riches. Let go, just go out there and mix with the people freely. Love freely for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lay down your selfishness and lay down your love for monetary gain. And all that prevents you to interact with the people freely for the sake of the gospel. 
Go out there and touch the lives of people without expecting anything from them in return. Love sacrificially and God will bless you in return. Love people the way they are. Love people, my viewer, for whom they are. Yeah? Me, I personally, I hate people who say that they love me for this or that. All right? Because if this or that one day comes to an end, it means that there will be no love left. But people who say that they love me for whom I am, so regardless of what I am, what I have, you know, I really do appreciate. And I'm sure every other person would appreciate to be loved for whom they are, not for what they have or for the status they hold in the society. They are all children of God. All of us. All of us are children of God. All right? Let your love and services to the children of God be for free and not for money and other other gains. And I want to say this, my viewer, that God knows how to compensate. God knows. You remember, we have just read that Paul says, he is happy, he is doing this for the sake of the gospel and also for the blessings that he himself gets by knowing that these people have come to Christ. So God knows how to bless, God knows how to reward. If you love freely, if you do it, remember Jesus saying, that someday he will divide people and he will ask them, I was poor, you never clothed me. I was hungry, you never fed me. I was thirsty, you never gave me water. And the people will ask, when did you, when did you, we never saw you. And he said, that when you do it for, the, for these retro ones, you do it for me. So when you are doing it, you are doing it for God. And because you are doing it for God this Christmas, if you go out there and touch people with what you have, and touch people with your time, go, take your time, go and see people. If you love sacrificially this Christmas, God knows how to bless. God is going to bless you. You are going to experience blessings in a way that you have never known. During this Christmas, let us go out there and love freedom. Let us interact with the people freedom with the view of winning them for Christ. As we remember the birth of Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus Christ, let us remember that we have to win souls for him, for the kingdom. All right? For the kingdom of God. Let us uplift those who are falling, let us strengthen those that are weak. Let us offer our love and friendship to those who are lonely. Let us feed those that are hungry. And let us share whatever little we have or whatever much we have. Let us share. Let us share with the people. Remember I was saying the other time, that somebody feels so good when you receive something, even if it is something small. When you are given that thing with a lot of love, you feel good. And no one does not feel good. Even if you have a lot, and somebody blesses you with something small, with a lot of love, it is worth. So we said, go out there, touch the lives of people with what you have. My view, I challenge you. I challenge you. Only a few days to Christmas. How many people, how many lives have you touched so far? So far, even as we approach Christmas, 25th, Saturday. Yeah? How many people have you touched with, what, with your life? And whatever you have, what you say. You can touch people 
by encouraging them. Yeah, in this life. There are very many people who are almost giving up in this life. Go out there and speak to someone the word of peace. Jesus came to bring peace. Go and speak to people words that will bring peace in their lives. Go and touch people whatever you have. If God has blessed you, make sure you also bless a number of people. All right? Take your time. You can also bless people with your time. Going to see people. Yeah? To visit people. There are people who are so lonely as we speak. They wish they can have a visitor. Someone who can come and talk to them. Can you visit those people who are lonely and make them feel good? Yeah? We are saying, let us go out there and touch the lives of people. And above all, let us do it for the sake of the gospel. Let us tell the people about Christ. Let us bring them to the saving, to the saving power of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. We have come to the end of this session. But don't go away. Liz Refuge continues. We are coming back with our guests. So don't go away.